Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon. I wrap Steena Blinn and Associates with your agriculture update for this Tuesday. And we are now at the 7th of March, 2016, getting on to about 2.25 p.m. Central Standard Time. So as we're looking at the market today in the grains, down across the board, wheat did pop back off its lows rather impressively. I thought once the market got down there, it might uh, actually start cratering more, but it did not. The cotton into a good size correction finally had been hanging up around the upper Bollinger Band, got itself I think to a point there where eventually it could pull back. And the sugar, I was on the way to work today and I'm reading a story, I forgot which newswire because I read so many different ones, of the firm that's been taking the delivery off the futures, which is unusual to begin with because you never know where their sugar is in the world, and explaining their theory at least as to how they put it on tankers. But I didn't realize the margin on sugar was so little. They're saying it's 2.1%, and this market's been collapsing. So by the time you've got higher energy costs and this market's coming down in price, I don't know where the margin is on that. I wonder if they're taking a beating on it. So as we take a look at the market, let's look at the beans. And you can see you've gone from 1080 on a weekly chart to 1006 recently. So we made our high at the, back in December, I'm sorry, back in January. And we have fallen down to a low that we ended up at the end of February. And we're having what's called an inside week. The market hasn't come out of last week's range. Now I've moved your down thrust though from a pattern back here to now the most recent one. With the follow through today, I think I can argue that you had a pattern where you had a low, you came up, down, and then back up nicely, and all of a sudden gave all that up. So I'm going to call it 10.52 and a quarter to the current low close of 10.25 and a quarter, but in a down thrust. You see that really on the chart here. Now, when I put up a bar chart like this, I don't know about you, I find it so much easier with a swing line. When I put the swing line on it, I get to see the apexes of the highs. I can see I'm making lower lows, lower highs. You have a downtrend. What will break that pattern? Taking out 1048 in a fraction. It's that simple. Where are the markets fighting? Well, they've been, they had been fighting right here at the 100-day average up to the 18. You know, you slide back and forth. You slid back under that 100 today. So where's the next support zone? Well, that's the lower Bollinger Band. So if this market wants to extend to the downside, the big question is, does it want to extend? If it does, that's your potential next support. Where's the resistance? 1043, what will the pros do? Well, when you look at the market in terms of momentum, this market is oversold. Any readings under 30 are oversold. So unless you get back up into these areas, I doubt the pros are going to try to sell the market at lower prices simply because it's oversold. In the meal market, a little different. Now, you get to oversold and then you can do something called convert. You can lock in a trend, a downtrend. And you do that by keeping both numbers under these numbers right here, under what number? Under 20. So you got there the day before and the day before. This is what we called an embedded reading. And on the rallies, I think the pros will be aggressive sellers. Okay, will they sell into a lower Bollinger Band? Well, there's not a big edge in doing that, especially when you got the 100-day average right below you there. But on the rallies, no, I think you'll see them show their hand. Now, in the soybean oil, the market now has a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, and it did manage to settle under the 18-day average of closes, momentum trying to turn down. Until you take out 3460 and break this pattern, this trend is now turned to the downside. The bias is down. Should it decide to break, maybe gets back to that lower Bollinger Band. We'll see. In the corn market, you have an ugly pattern of a higher high and a lower low. There's nothing you can do with that. Momentum, well, it's neutral, trying to turn down, but I'll call it neutral at this point. I'm guessing the professionals will look at the key moving average resistance of 378 if they want to go short the market. 
They don't want to see prices over this 383 level. If they did, well, you'd have another pattern. You'd have a lower low and a higher high over the 18-day average. So we'll see if you can get up a trend. Chicago wheat held on. Uh, Kansas City did not. Chicago wheat fell back to the 18-day average and did find its footing there until 448's taken out. This market is still looking okay. Uh, you didn't go home with much if you bought it at the 18-day average, but you're still in the game, and that's what you're, you're there to do. Sugar just falling apart. And look at how this market looks on the charts. You're headed, if you keep going down, maybe into the 17s here. So we'll see what the heck happens. But you are under the lower Bollinger Band. You know, the odds of staying it are only 5% of the time. That doesn't mean you can't put a few of those together. So keep your eye on that. In the coffee, lower highs, lower lows from here. Oversold and hitting the lower Bollinger Band area where it's trying to find its support. Uh, it hasn't quite gotten there yet. I said area, about 100 points away from it. So I misspoke on that, I think. But uh, that could be the next spot. You got to, you're not 100 points from the low today. You were 50 points. But you're still down from that, and uh, we'll see what it does. Cocoa. I happen to be looking hard at the cocoa market all day today. And the last trades, even though it's settled 1917, remember that settlement's over a half hour before the market's last trades of the day, you were pushing the lows at 1906 and 07. So the question is, does it make a run in the morning uh, for the 1878 level? We'll have to sit, wait and see, but uh, with the stronger dollar, it's certainly not looking real good here. And the cotton, as I said, it got up to the upper Bollinger Bands. It's starting to pull back. It is overbought. I think the pros will let it get out of that overbought condition before they chase it. The cattle broke just enough today to get under the last break low of uh, 115.25. So you end up with a pattern of a higher high and a lower low from that. There is no trend. The market has got momentum pointing to the downside. Feeder cattle seems to be caught between the 18-day and the 100-day average of closes right now. So when you get there, you churn a little bit. Should it get momentum down, look for the 121, 17 and a half area, the lower Bollinger Band. In the hog market, you've got a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. There is no trend. Notice how the market's down here into an oversold condition. I don't see a darn thing to do with that. I want to talk to you about Modern Trader Magazine. These are the index of the new uh, publication for April. Average true range, platinum gold spread, coffee, footprint protocols, trading currency wars, and of course all the ETFs and the stock market talk that you've got. Not only articles, great, great graphics that prove points and teach you what to do. This is all important. I mean, I have the library of this, I think going back to the very first publication when it was first, Futures Magazine, and now it's called Modern Trader. And it's invaluable. I still dig into it. Call us. Go to our website, and by the way, if you go online to get it from them, you'll pay $79.95. Do that. If you get hold of us, it's free, and that's with their grace. It comes to you by email, and of course, during the day, you get what's called Modern Focus to go off with this. But as you can see, you're going to talk earnings, you're going to talk China. It's full of information. And you can also click right up here if you're watching me on YouTube. That'll bring out the form to click off what you want under us on some websites. They frame all this and what they do from the framing is they put it all together. And from that framing, you just click on it and the uh, form will pop up from there. So take advantage of it. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.